In this lesson, we are going to kill two birds with one stone. That's an idiom, which means to complete two tasks with one action. I'm going to give you some listening practice and at the same time teach you about an event in British history, the Great Fire of London. This is an upper intermediate to advanced lesson, so you can use this to practice your listening if you're at that level or to challenge yourself if you're not quite there yet. Before we begin, I'll go through some of the vocabulary which is not often taught when learning a new language, but that you'll need to fully understand this story. Firstly, blaze or flames. These are words which will be used to describe the fire. So to make a story more interesting, it's important to find synonyms for words which are used multiple times. So blaze and flames. Next, we have flammable. Flammable. This means easily set on fire. Next is wood. Wood. This is a material which is made from the trunk or branches of a tree. Straw. Straw. Another material which is made from dried stalks of grain. Fire brigade. Fire brigade. This is the organised group of people who are trained and employed to fight the fire. Extinguish. Extinguish. This, in this context, is to cause a fire to stop. Next, burn. Burn is the damage caused by fire. Burn down is a phrasal verb which means to be completely destroyed by fire. We often use this particularly in reference to buildings. The building burned down. To flee. This means to run away from a place or situation of danger. The past tense of to flee is fled, which is the form of this word used in the story you're about to hear. Gunpowder. Gunpowder is an explosive powder used in fireworks. Historians. Historians are people who are experts in history. Diary. A diary is a book in which one keeps a daily record of events and experiences. Do you keep a diary? Monument. A monument is a structure which is constructed to commemorate an important person or event. Okay. Are you ready to listen? Just as an FYI for your information, there are subtitles on this video, so turn them on if you need them. Just after midnight on the 2nd of September 1666, a fire began in a bakery on Pudding Lane in London. The blaze spread quickly for several reasons. Firstly, because of the high population in London, houses were built very close together so the fire was able to spread quickly. Secondly, many of the houses were made from flammable materials such as wood and straw. These building materials were prohibited because of a history of large fires in the city, but the cheap materials were still used by many people despite this. Thirdly, it had not rained in London for 10 months, so the city was very dry. Finally, there was a strong wind which blew the flames quickly towards London Bridge. All of these conditions made it easy for the fire to spread quickly and difficult to get it under control. The fire brigade tried desperately to extinguish the flames using water, but they were unsuccessful. This was made particularly difficult by London's narrow streets, meaning that they did not have the space for the equipment to be effective. Unfortunately, in 1666, we did not know as much about how to stop a fire as we know today. The fire lasted for four days and burned down over 13,000 homes, 87 churches and many famous buildings, including St Paul's Cathedral. Many people fled by boat on the River Thames to get away from the flames. Eventually, 
a plan was suggested to blow up an area of houses and buildings in the fire's path to prevent it from spreading and to put it out. Gunpowder was used to destroy those buildings and by the next morning, the fire had finally stopped. More than 70,000 people were made homeless as a result of the fire. Six people were recorded as dead. It is thought that many more people lost their lives in the flames as historians claim that the deaths of poorer people would not have been recorded. The most famous text we can use to learn about the Great Fire of London is the Diary of Samuel Pepys, who could see much of the destruction from his home, which was not affected. The fire continues to influence the city of London hundreds of years later. Many houses were rebuilt using brick instead of wood to prevent fires spreading so rapidly in the future, and a large monument was erected in the city to remember the Great Fire of London, which can still be seen today. So that was the end of this lesson. What did you think? Did you find it difficult? Was it interesting to learn about history? Let me know in the comments whether you liked this new style of lesson, and if you did, I'll make sure to make more videos just like this one. Until next time, why not check out this lesson? I'll see you soon.